everyone, I'm Sarah of Rich Textures Crochet and welcome. Today we're going to be making the Not So Vintage Hot Pad, which you can see here in front of you. Now, this is a hot dish pad. It is extra thick uh, with a solid backing and then this beautiful thick uh, spiked puff stitch worked as the front of it. It's worked as two pieces that are then crocheted together and then your little hanger is added up here at the top. For the pattern today we're going to need uh, three different colors. You're not going to use uh, the whole ball of each color but the puff stitches do take up a little bit more yarn. I'm using the Lion brand Pima cotton yarn. This is a worsted weight 100% cotton. You'll need three different colors. I've used approximately one ball for each, you're going to need more for your color A than your other two colors. Each ball has about 186 yards in it. You're probably, uh, again, not going to use all of that. Now you're also going to need a five millimeter crochet hook and a copy of the free written pattern, which can be found on my website at richtexturescrochet.com. The direct link is there for you in the description of this video. So thank you so much for joining me. While you're here, I invite you to subscribe, take a look around, and uh, there are lots of other crochet patterns here for your home and free crochet stitch tutorials as well. Our pattern today is worked in rows and as I mentioned it's worked as two separate pieces that are then crocheted together so we're going to start by working the front side of our hot pad so taking your color A you're going to make a slip knot you're then going to chain 30 Once you have your foundation chain worked, you're going to begin by working a single crochet for row one into the second chain from your hook and then into each stitch all the way across. When you come all the way across at the end of row one, we are going to switch to your color B and to do that, in my final stitch, you're going to insert your hook and yarn over with your color A. Then drop your color A, pick up the color B and place it on your hook, yarn over and pull through. You're going to leave your color A attached and we will be carrying our yarn just gently up the side as our work progresses. Now working with your color B, you're going to chain one and turn your work. For row two, begin by working a single crochet into the first stitch. Your chain one does not count as a stitch at the beginning of the row. You're then going to chain one and work a puff stitch into the next stitch. To work your puff stitch, you're going to yarn over, insert your hook into the next stitch, yarn over and drop a loop. Do that for a total of three times. So there's one, two and three then yarn over and draw through all the loops on your hook next chain one skip the next stitch and work a puff stitch into the next yarn over insert your hook into the next stitch yarn over and drop a loop three times that's once twice three times yarn over and draw through all the loops on your hook and repeat chain one skip one puff stitch in the next repeat that all the way across when you come across you're going to be switching to your color C which I will show you once again how to do once I come all the way across
At the end of row two, I've come all the way across. I'm going to skip my next single crochet, work a puff stitch, chain one, and you'll have one stitch remaining. Into this final stitch, you're going to work one more single crochet, switching to your color C in the process. So insert your hook in the final stitch, yarn over, drop a loop, drop your color B. We will leave it attached and pick it up later on. Put your color C on your hook and pull through. Now working with your color C, chain one and turn your work. For row three, we're going to begin by working a single crochet into this first stitch and chain one. You're then going to skip the next puff stitch and working into the single crochet that is two rows below, so that's our row one into this single crochet, you're going to work one puff stitch. So we're working over top of that chain one space. Chain one and repeat. Skip the next puff stitch into the next single crochet two rows below, work one puff stitch. chain one, skip the next puff, and work a puff stitch in the next skipped single crochet two rows below. Repeat that all the way across. Once you come all the way across at the end of row three, you're going to chain one, you have one puff stitch left. You're going to skip this puff stitch and work a single crochet stitch into your final stitch, so into your single crochet. As you do this, you're going to switch back to your color A. So chain one, single crochet, in, yarn over, in, uh, sorry, insert your hook in the next stitch, yarn over, drop a loop. You can drop your color A, or sorry, color C, and pick up the color A. Just gently pull it up the side and pull through to complete the single crochet stitch. You're then going to chain one and turn your work. For row four, working with your color A, you're going to begin by working a single crochet into the top of the first stitch, chain one, and now work a puff stitch in the chain one space two rows below. So you had your puff stitch and then your chain one and then your single crochet that was worked in your color B. So into the space, two rows below, work one puff stitch. Chain one, skip the next puff. Once again, into the chain one space, two rows below, and you may have to pull your stitches apart a little bit in order to see it, you're going to work another puff stitch. Chain one, skip one, into the next chain one space, two rows below, work another puff stitch all the way across. When you come all the way across at the end of row four, you're going to work your final puff stitch into the final chain one space, chain one, and then single crochet into the top of the final single crochet, switching to your color B, which you'll find attached. So you're just going to gently pull it up the side and pull it through. Chain one, turn your work. For row five, we're going to single crochet into the top of the first stitch and chain one. Skip the next puff stitch and into your next chain one space, work one puff stitch, two rows below. Chain one skip the next puff stitch into the next space two 
rows below. So we're working under our color C here. You're going to work your next puff stitch. Chain one and repeat all the way across. When you come across at the end of row five, you're going to chain one, then skip the final puff stitch and single crochet into your first single cr crochet, switching to your color C in that final stitch. Chain one and turn. You're now going to, for the rest of the front of your hot pad you're going to repeat your rows four and five alternating through your colors a b and c until your work from the beginning measures approximately seven and a half inches so your row four started with the single crochet chain one and in this first chain one space work a puff stitch and so forth and then row five which was the row that we just worked. So you're going to repeat rows four and five, alternate through the colors A, B, and C until your work from the beginning measures approximately seven and a half inches. At that time you can fasten off and weave in any ends and meet me back here and we'll walk through the rest of the design. Once you have worked to about seven and a half inches, this is what your piece is going to look like quite thick, quite heavy, and wonderful for this design. You're then going to weave in any ends and set it aside. We're now going to work the back side of our not so vintage hot pad. Start by making a slip knot and it's a very simple backing. You're going to go ahead and chain 30. There's 15, and 30. Once you have your chain worked, you're going to work a half double crochet into the second chain from your hook, and then half double crochet into each stitch all the way across. At the end of row one for the back side, you're going to chain one and turn your work. You're now going to work a half double crochet into your first stitch. Your chain one does not count as a stitch and then into each stitch all the way across. You are going to repeat this row two until your work from the beginning measures approximately seven and a half inches. Uh, for me, that took about 22 rows in total of half double crochet, but you really want it to be the same size as the front piece of your hot pad. So I work 22 rows. You're going to work until it's about seven and a half inches or reaches the same dimensions as the front of your hot pad. Then you can fasten off, weave in your ends, and meet me back here and we'll join them together. Once you have your front and your back worked, you're going to join these two pieces together. So what you're going to do is simply lay them one over the other, like so. And then in your top corner, you're going to join your yarn with a slip stitch. When you join, you're going to work through both thicknesses, so inserting your hook through the front piece and through the back piece. I used my color A, join with a slip stitch. You're then going to chain one, and beginning in this first stitch, work one single crochet into each stitch all the way across. Once again, as you are working, 
will want to work uh, through both thicknesses. As you're working, also make sure that you're not skipping any stitches in between or adding any stitches. You just want to have an even single crochet stitch all the way across. So single crochet all the way across to your corner. When you come all the way across to your corner stitch, you're going to work three single crochet stitches into that corner. There's two and three all into that corner stitch. It's going to turn force you to turn your work so that you're now working along this rough edge. Uh, when you come to this rough edge, you are going to work 27 single crochet stitches evenly along the edge. Now it, you may change the number of stitches that you work along here. Uh, just make sure that you make note of it so that you can work the same number on the other side. I single crocheted 27. That will bring, bring you across to your next corner. You're then going to work three single crochet stitches into your next corner. Single crochet all the way down along here and then along 20 more, 7 more single crochet around your rough edge. That will bring you up to your first corner stitch. At that point in time, uh, you can meet me back here and I will show you how to work an easy hanger for your crochet hot pad. When you come all the way around to your final corner, you're going to work two single crochet stitches into your corner stitch and then join with a slip stitch into the first stitch. So you've now come all the way around. We're now going to work just a simple hanger for our hot pad. For the hanger, you're going to simply chain 10. Then turn your work and slip stitch into the next stitch. chain one. Once again turn your work and now working into the chain stitches you're going to slip stitch in each of the ten chain stitches all the way across. So in each of those chain stitches that you worked simply slip stitch in each across. When you come all the way across into the corner stitch once again of your hot pad, you're going to slip stitch and then it's up to you. I like to just kind of slip stitch in each of the next two or three stitches. At this time you can then fasten off, weave in your ends and your not so vintage hot pad is complete. So thank you so much for joining me and uh, once again I invite you to take a look around, subscribe, uh, stay tuned. I'm going to be having a um, matching washcloth available uh, later on in the week. So until then, until I see you again, happy crocheting. Bye. Mm -hmm.